Canberry. A thousand people in the in the world uh, will disease test. And wh what happens is the, the virus will go into your spinal fluid and it builds a family. Then it will eat all your nerve ending and then you lose your five senses one by one. Amen? Uh, the Every jab is $30,000. Every jab is $30,000. Uh, I think she had about five. All right? So it was that critical. We prayed. In six days, God healed her. Amen? You know, uh, uh, later she developed breast cancer. Same thing. Doctor said it is terminal. Uh, Mrs. Henry, you will not survive. You know, God healed. You know, uh, it's been, uh, uh, they said you must be careful. And they prescribed uh, a drug called Tomaxifen. Uh, that drug is for your life. She said, uh, you know, uh, this Tomaxifen has got a lot of side effects. So I'm not going to listen to the doctor. I'm going to listen to God. <laughs> she threw out the Tomaxifen. Uh, please don't do this, okay? <laughs> That's my mother, la, huh? not you all. Huh? Please don't do this throw out. And you know what? Uh, it's been 25 years now. <laughs> the cancer never ever came back. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I believe in a God that uh, a healing God. Amen. We're going to talk about it. Before that, let's pray. Thank you, Father. In the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ, the name by which every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, that Jesus Christ is God to the glory of the Father forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. Let the unfolding of your word bring forth light and let the light right now shine into the darkness. Let the light break barriers. Let the word, O oh Lord, destroy defenses. Let the word destroy diseases. Let the word destroy depression. Let the word destroy discouragement. Let the word destroy every lie of the devil this morning, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray and ask all this. Do only what you can do. And take all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, when we were worshipping, you know, the sky is opened over the church. The sky is opened over the church. You know, a white ladder appeared from the heaven. It came down, down, down. It came to that, that side of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed are you sitting that side. <laughs> you all also blessed. Lah. Okay. Don't be jealous. Huh? Okay. The ladder appeared in this side of the church. Okay. There, there were angels ascending and descending. Amen. So I want to prophesy to you that uh, God is going to take this church to the next level. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see here very few people clap. Lah. Anyway, uh, uh, globally, okay, uh, things are going to accelerate very, very fast. I think you all know what I'm talking about. And uh, uh, it's going to get very dark. All right, you, you have to be prepared. It's going to get very dark. But you will see uh, Isaiah 60 come to fulfillment before our eyes. Arise and shine. That what happens. First it becomes dark, then you arise and shine, and the light will uh, shine brighter from the church because there's one last harvest waiting to happen. It's not rapture yet. Okay, there's one last great harvest. Before that, the world will look like tribulation. <laughs> Amen? So, uh, uh, what you got to do is, if you, if you never had a prayer life, develop one. If your uh, prayer altar is crumbled, build it again. Amen? If there's something that God asks you to do, do it quickly. You know, uh, uh, Jesus gave the last piece of bread 
You know, the, everybody was saying, who's going to betray you, Lord? Who's going to betray you, Lord? You know, the Lord took the bread, gave, gave it to Judas and said, what you got to do, do it quickly. <laughs> the betrayer got an instruction like that, how about you and me? Amen? So anyway, that, that's just uh, advertisement. That's not the message. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about conquerors. In the end times, you got to learn how to be a conquerors, a conqueror. Amen. Uh, uh, can you accomplish it? Oh, yes, you can. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Amen. Let let me read a portion of scripture before I go into the word. All right. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. And what then shall we say of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Do you believe God is for you? Then who can be against you? Amen? God who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not... With him also freely give you all things. So what do you want? Ask from God. Amen. If he can give his son, he can give you all things. Amen. Uh, the, uh, God becoming a man is another topic altogether. Right? It's a very uh, powerful uh, uh, thing to study. You know, how God became a man, how God, you know, uh, who's divine, stepped into our time, the impact of him stepping into our time, okay, divided time into AD and BC, you know, divided time and space came down, be, became a man. That's another topic altogether, but we are not going to go, go there this morning. All right. Who shall bring a charge against uh, God's elect? It is God who justifies. 34. Who is he who condemns if it is Christ who died and furthermore is also is also risen who is even at the right hand of God who makes who also makes intercession for us if you feel that nobody is praying for you I want to encourage you that Jesus is praying for you 24 7 3 6 5 some intercession is going up for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. So we're going to look at some deep things there. 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. You know, uh, in, the, in the last days, love must be your foundation. Because the Bible warns the love of man will grow cold. Without that uh, power, okay, you cannot become a conqueror. Okay, let's, let's look at some points. Man, you know, uh, 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 many people think, uh, now that I, I received Jesus, I got uh, water baptized, <coughs> And the, and the church gave me a baptismal certificate. <laughs> Everybody got baptismal certificate. Huh? If you don't have, go and see Dr. Kwan. <laughs> Lost us on a man. Go and see, he will make one for you. Huh, Dr. Kwan? If we have all that, you know, that's about enough. Lah. I want to tell you, it's not enough. Okay? 
Salvation is more than just getting saved to go to heaven. Once our time on earth is over. Amen? You clocked enough of time. It's over. No, 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 no. You know? Salvation is what? God's plan to conform you, all right, into becoming like Christ. I mean, uh, I read about a testimony of somebody who went up to heaven. All right. Uh, in heaven, everybody looked like Christ. They didn't look like themselves. Everybody looked like Christ. They are conformed. You must be conformed into the image of Christ. Christ heaven only accepts a prototype which is conformed into the image of Christ. Don't be disappointed when you get up there. Then, when you, uh, a believer is conformed to become like Christ, into the image of Christ, the next level is rulership. Okay, God, God will take you into uh, a place, you must learn how to rule and reign over your enemies. Down here, before you can be used by God, one day all of us will judge angels, you know, that's what the Bible says. But you must learn how to rule and reign against your enemies down on earth. Amen? This is the reason why God allows some problems to go on. <laughs> this is the reason why some health challenges appear suddenly. Eh? This is the reason why some financial challenges come suddenly. Life is not going to be smooth, but God promised in everything, I will be there with you. Amen? Isn't he a good God? He said, I will I'll not leave you. I won't forsake you. But I won't take your problems away also. <laughs> the problems are meant to train you. Okay? To rule and reign with Christ. The, the Bible says you are already seated in the heavenly places. Far above the principalities and the power. So don't be afraid of the devil. Amen? Don't be afraid of the devil. Actually, the devil is afraid of you. But he's a liar and a thief. So he's trying to, to broadcast a, a lie to you and say, it, you know, uh, you should be afraid of me. No, actually, he's afraid of you. You know what he's afraid? He's afraid you will complete the process called be, being conformed into the image of Christ. And when you, when you are reaching or you have reached that level, you know what will happen? You will walk into places. Huh? People will get healed. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to even whisper. You walk into the place, the anointing that will emanate from you, okay, will heal the sick. Demons will disappear. You know, people will begin to know the power of God. Amen? Because Christianity is not about argument of words. It's about the demonstration of the power. Amen? And in the, in the end times, God wants to use not only pastor, God wants to use everybody to demonstrate the power of God. Amen? So you can become conquerors. The process, how to become conquerors? Process number one will be painful. <laughs> I tell you now. Huh? Process number one will be painful. Why it will be painful? Because, you know, the love of God must conquer you before you can conquer. The love of God must conquer you. Amen? Before you can become conquerors. When the love of God come and it conquer you, first thing the Holy Spirit will tell you, this one you have to give up, that one you have to give up, this one you have to give up, that one you have to give up. Cleansing process happens. Amen? Uh, 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 a supernatural detox must happen in your spiritual life. And... Uh, uh, it is not on uh, uh, 
New Year, Easter, and Sunday, uh, and Christmas. <laughs> it's an everyday, th- everyday thing. Amen. Uh, uh, as you grow, as you, as the Holy Spirit push you, push you, push you deeper into God's presence, impurities will be exposed. What are you going to do about them? You are all very silent. Huh? <laughs> Scary. <huh? laughs> You, Holy Spirit will eventually push you deeper, closer, 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 closer into God's presence. And then what happens? God is light. You know, Bible says even his, un, uh, his uh, unapproachable light, the light is so bright. You know, push you, push you, push you. Then what happens? All the impurities will begin to be exposed. What you need to do? You need to learn how to surrender and not fight uh, if you if you fight and game over <laughs> if you fight game over eh? process will be longer and will be more painful if you surrender it's faster like what brother said because david surrendered lord i i i rather fall at your feet <clears throat> okay so the the judgment was short all right, 70,000 people in Israel, the, 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 the angel of death uh, came, okay, and it was uh, chopping down people and it was killing people. 70,000 died. Have you seen an angel? You know, the last angel that I've seen is the height of KLCC. You know how tall is KLCC? Okay, the, the, the angel... The height of the KLCC was standing in the South China Sea and stirring the seas. I say, Lord, why is the angel stirring the seas? No, I'm, that angel is preparing to bring judgment. The tsunami waters is going to rise and he's going to baptize nations that don't repent. Okay? So, uh, uh, because the, the entire church world has gone into something called hyper grace, 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 okay? And they don't want to talk about repentance. You know, uh, repentance is very important. <laughs> and, uh, and whenever Jesus preached, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. After that, it is what? The code word is what? Repent. Amen? Then you have to allow the Holy Spirit to pour the Father's love in your heart. Amen? Uh, uh, the, 70, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s generation sitting here, I'm uh, 70s generation, uh, 1972. I was born 1972, 70s generation. Uh. What we ex- experienced in our life uh, was a lot of Authority abuse. You know authority abuse? We were abused in uh, school. We were abused in uh, workplace. Some of us were abused uh, in a home setting. You know, the, the authority figures that we looked up to, okay, imposed some abuse on us to the point that we, we cannot see, have a, a clear understanding about God. When we... When we when we look at God, we think God wants to punish us. <laughs> you know, when, when God uh, doesn't answer your prayer, you, you feel that, you know, oh, I d- I've done some sin. You know, so God don't answer. Amen? We, we don't understand uh, love. We understand, we understand uh, instructions very well. We follow them very well. And some of them, were, were, we are beaten and we are trained like that <laughs> to follow instruction, but we don't understand love. <coughs> so we need the, uh, the Holy Spirit to pour the Father's love into your heart. Amen? So abuse of our authority brought what? Unabilit- the, the, the unability to forgive. Very difficult to forgive. Inside you already like Batu. <coughs> You know? So all that have to go. Amen? 
And then the Holy Spirit will tell you four things you have to put to death. Especially in, uh, in our, our uh, Eastern culture, Southeast Asia, okay, very prevalent. Number one is legalism. You know what is legalism? My great-grandfather taught me to do it like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. So I will do like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Even though like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like that. <laughs> no moral value about it. No truth about it. There's no effectiveness about it. It brings more damage than good. But still, it has to be like this, like this, like this, like this, like that, like that, like that. Even, even uh, work, okay? Uh, uh, legalistic mind cannot understand. They, they will never accept. Huh? Work smart, not work hard. <laughs> they reject the idea called work smart and not work hard. They like work hard. Must work hard. Nothing wrong with work hard. But if there's a better way called work smart, I'd rather go and work smart. Amen? Because why? If it, if it takes, it's going to take 10 years for me to get here. You know? If I work smart, it cuts the 10 years to 5 years. You don't want to. I want. But a legalistic mind will not accept such thoughts. Amen? Same in the in the in the in the uh, 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 religious beliefs, amen. No, the church must operate like that, like that, like that. Who told you the church must operate like that, like that, like this, like that? The church must operate according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Why there's so many de denominations in the world? So many Christian denominations. You know why? Christ is one, the Father is one, the Holy Spirit is one. But you know why so many denominations? Because they started out, they started out right. Okay? They walk with the Holy Spirit. Then, come to a certain uh, place. Okay? As the process got harder and harder, huh? they said, no, Holy Spirit, we, we, we don't want to go any more further. We will stop here. Thank you very much. You go on, we will remain here. When they, when they didn't follow the Holy Spirit and they remain here, they became dead religion. Amen? So, legalism, then rituals. Holy Spirit will convict you about uh, rituals that are not in the word of God, that are handed over in your culture. Amen? Nothing wrong with culture. You know, but in every culture, there will be a part that will offend God. <coughs> what are you going to do about that one? <coughs> are you going to cling on, cling on to your culture? Or are you going to let it go? You know, in, Indi in India, sorry, huh, in, in India, I'm talking about India, huh, in India, okay, churches, believers are still grappling, now it's 2024, huh, huh, still grappling, with dowry problem. Still, believers still grapple with dowry problem. It should have been resolved long time ago, but they still grapple. Amen. They still grapple with the uh, 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 woman in the church must veil their head, <laughs> cannot wear makeup, cannot wear jewelry, must wear all white. You know, you must bow a certain way, you must sit a certain way, you must kneel a certain way. Okay, this is dead religion which will keep people from being conformed into the image of Christ. You know, that, that is why the, the scribe and the Pharisees hate, hated Jesus to the core and wanted him dead. You know why? On the Sabbath day, Jesus healed the sick word. Amen? Ask yourself one thing. Healing the sick, was he working? <laughs> no, you cannot work on the Sabbath day. Oh, you will be stoned. Cannot work on the Sabbath day. But Jesus healed the sick 
on the Sabbath day and, and, and how did he heal the sick on the Sabbath day? He will just say something like, pick up your mat and walk. Saying only what? Is it work? Huh? No, it's, it's not work. He, he's just declaring something. The Holy Spirit is, is expediting a miracle. That's it. But the, you know, the scribe and the Pharisees, because of their religious mind, here, keras already, macam batu, uh, religious mind, cannot accept that that's a miracle. Oh, no, 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 you cannot do uh, work on, on the Sabbath day. So Jesus said, if your donkey falls in the well and you go and pull it out, okay, what have you exhibited? You showed mercy and compassion, isn't it? So this is religious spirit. You do not allow mercy and compassion to be sitting on the throne. It will, it will uh, dictate rules and regulation to be sitting on the throne. But, you know, for, for all these things, it's going to be game over. If you want a, a genuine move of God, you want God to move, you want uh, uh, what happened in the Bible to be happening in your daily life, then these have to go too. Third is the flesh. What, what did the, what did the uh, uh, Apostle John say about the flesh? Huh? Works of the flesh does what? It replaces the Father's love in your life. For the works of the flesh are what? Plain. They are not hidden so that you need a microscope to see. They are plain. You can see with your naked eye. What is the works of the flesh? It is plain. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life will do what? Deny you from receiving the Father's love. Amen? If you don't have the Father's love, you will be filled with the world's cold, dark nature. Amen? All right. So I covered that. So these things all have to die. If the church wants revival, all these things have to die. If you want to, to experience the tangible move of God, because God is going to move in such a way, you know, when God does things, He doesn't do something like what He did yesterday. <laughs> okay? We Indians like to eat yesterday's curry. Correct? Huh? <laughs> Why? Yesterday's curry is very tasty. Huh? The longer you keep, then the mama will tell you, the longer you keep the curry, oh, more tasty. Lah. Uh, but God doesn't work like us. It's new thing every day. And he's, he's very uh, particular about this. He told the Levi priest, hey, you Levi priest, I give you warning. Huh? My menorah must be filled with fresh oil. That, that is why they have a mountain called the Mount of Olives. You know the Mount of Olives? Jesus went there to do what? Pray. The mount of is a whole mountain full of what? Olive trees. Huh? Olive trees and there's an olive grove there. Every day, okay, there is oil, olive oil production going down there. They're making fresh uh, olive oil to be poured into the menorah because in the menorah you cannot pour yesterday's oil. The fleur who is pouring the oil will not come out alive. Okay? That's probably his last shift. He's probably dead after that. <laughs> In the Old Testament, God is very, very specific. Okay? Uh, uh, disobedience and rebellion leads to death. Today, today I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful I'm a Christian because, uh, you know, uh, we live by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Third thing, to be conquerors. You see, this is what the, the Apostle Paul wrote. Okay, I'm going to come to a close of the message. Okay, listen to me carefully. All right, another name for the Apostle Paul, his, his title is called the Ambassador in Chains. Some Bible commentators say, it, okay, Timothy 1 2 and Romans, okay, were Paul's. Last letter to the churches. Where was he writing the letters? In house arrest. Amen. This apostle, his body is full of marks. Wherever he goes, he's persecuted, he's beaten, 
he said he's betrayed he's put in prison amen wherever he go he turns the place upside down there will be riots okay riots to chase this one man out of the town you know that that kind of powerful ministry amen praise god for the apostle paul you know uh, all the letters uh, if you want to know it's called the pauline epistle pauline epistle means all the letters written by apostle paul i just give you some information amen so this is the man approaching death what kind of death okay he is going to be beheaded by caesar amen in 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 his uh, house uh, arrest okay house arrest huh? house arrest those days means your house is surrounded by roman guards amen uh, visitors are all vetted not everybody can go and see he is a, a, a house arrest means he's a high profile criminal only they give house arrest waiting for death sentence so that that that's the man who is writing this context <coughs> amen to just stir up your imagination huh? that's the man who is writing this context and look what he is saying yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am persuaded <coughs> amen powerful word huh? for i am per persuaded persuaded to do what that neither death when he's talking about neither death he's talking about his death sentence is going to die eh? he's going to be head going to be cut off by caesar eh? huh? neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities okay principalities mean demons devils satan no powers no things present no things to come okay he saying whatever this happened in my life and whatever this going to be happen in my uh, uh, from now on is not going to affect me at all because i am persuaded i am more than a conqueror no height no depth no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus amen give the lord a clap offering <laughs> amen i want to congratulate you and i want to salute you because you are the generation who survived the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah ha huh? Ah, we all together, eh? together. Okay, we are all through the lockdown, through everything. Yeah, you, know, you know what I remember about the pandemic is this. Ah, huh? one of the most difficult food to get when when the lockdown was on, ah, huh, was bread. You know that? The bread shell will always be empty. Amen. And then I went to Speed Mart ninety nine. Ah, I don't know why lah. You know, the guy had compassion in me. He leaked out a secret. he said you know uh, if we want bread from from here 5 km is a uh, petron station there okay you go there 6 o'clock 6 o'clock morning the truck will come ha uh, when the truck comes it's full of bread you can get bread <laughs> hallelujah you see how god works amen so you survived the pandemic and you're sitting here listening to the word of god you know it's like you you've conquered the disease amen people who took the vaccine are still dying there my friend uh, another friend just died amen the symptoms all uh, are ridiculous symptoms you know it all points to one thing i think it is the vaccine that killed her so if you survive okay all that and you are sitting here hallelujah and you give glory to god you are a conqueror Amen. If whatever you went through last week, 
all the hell you went through on monday morning <laughs> you know every working people uh, monday morning they are very afraid i don't know why <laughs> sunday hallelujah monday morning go to, go to work <laughs> the, the 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 boss is like a tiger <laughs> i i know very well because i worked under four women women bosses <laughs> women bosses huh na huh? I don't know why on Monday morning they are like a tiger <laughs> waiting to to prowl to bite off who said I'm not too sure you know uh, when, when, you know uh, when the boss car come come into the parking uh, we got a spy la huh? we got a spy okay <laughs> the boss the lady boss come with the car and park in the parking lot okay the the flow will say in uh, what uh, in some chinese word la what the uh, lofu or loshi or something you'll say la <laughs> they shout the word <laughs> tiger tiger <laughs> tiger is here everybody shut off internet everything shut off everything like that then open the the company website open put on the screen and then pretend to do work monday morning Huh? Praise God. You awake on Monday morning. You know, whatever that you experience on Monday morning, you awake on Monday, you awake on last week. And you're sitting here in the house of God. I mean, I want to prophesy to you and declare to you you are a conqueror. If you remain in the love of Christ. Okay? if you stop allowing bitterness anger vengeance unforgiveness all these to to you know uh, uh, sit on the throne of your heart okay and uh, and you and you decide to just love jesus with all your heart and that's all you say god i will go all the way for you then you are a conqueror then the power of the love of christ will conform you into the image of christ and you will be a conqueror you will conquer the disease you will conquer the depression you will conquer the discouragement you know you can go through hell you can go through into the pit amen you will understand amen that there's no hole that is so deep god cannot put his hand and pull you out there's no problem that is so big that god cannot solve amen there's no disease that is so great that you cannot be healed amen so we are more than conqueror tell your neighbor i am more than a i am more than a conqueror why am i more than a conqueror because jesus loves me amen jesus loves me you know the the times you are living in every day you have to tell jesus loves me Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You know, if you get tired of tell, just take out your handphone and just <laughs> press record and tell the the handphone 10 times, Jesus loves me. 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 Tell like that, record it. Morning, night and noon you replay that one. Amen. Hallelujah. Come let's pray. Thank you, Father. in the name of jesus thank you lord you are a good god we worship you we love you lord we thank you you gave your life for us on the cross you died to set us free and thank you that you given eternal life according to this word that we have heard today Lord I pray that this word will sink so deep into our hearts and we will be so persuaded like the apostle Paul oh Lord that we will walk knowing that we are more than conquerors to Christ who loved us hallelujah for this we give you thanks and praise Lord in Jesus name we pray and the people say Amen hallelujah shout amen shout hallelujah come on
Hallelujah. Come on.